In chapter 8, I'm going to go a little deeper into the whole issue of text criticism, and I'm going to start by discussing the different text types. I really didn't want to talk about them in the book, but there were other things I couldn't explain unless I had covered text types. So you may be familiar with some of these words, the Alexandrian and the Western and the Byzantine text types. It's just a way of grouping manuscripts based on somewhat on their geographical location and their tendencies as to how accurate or, or how much they were willing to add to the text, uh, those kinds of stuff. Alexandrian manuscripts tended to come from Egypt and tended to be very accurate. The Western texts come from the area of Italy, tended to be very expansive, but they went out of use when the church moved to Latin and they got the Vulgate. And the Byzantine texts come out of Byzantium or Constantinople, and when the Ottoman Empire attacked and destroyed it, those scholars fled to Europe and it was the Byzantine text, the text that they brought with them, that became known as the Textus Receptus and the basis of the King James. So I'm going to go a bit into text types and trying to explain uh, what they are and why it's important. I'll also be getting into some of the more famous variants and talking about them in detail. The story of the woman caught in adultery, which I still think is the worst named story. It's because the man was caught in adultery too. Uh, but the ending of Mark, where you can handle snakes and drink poison and not die, and especially the passage in 1 John 5 that has caused so much consternation, so much trouble, people accusing the NIV and the ESV and all modern translations of removing the Trinity, when in fact those verses were obviously and clearly added 14, 1500 years after John wrote the letter. So we'll get into some of the details on those more famous variations in the manuscripts. And while I'm in this topic, I have to talk about the King James. It's a difficult passage because it can become very emotional, but I'm going to talk about how the King James translates the Byzantine text and the 17 verses that are not omitted from modern translations, but were added into the King James translation. So it's a controversial passage, but one that's pretty important to understand.